Hi guys, back with a really quick video for you on the new 2011 socket and mount. We're also going to compare the different sizes of the CPUs as well. Um, but first of all, we'll take a look at the new mounting mechanism. Now this is very similar to the way that the, uh, the Xeon processors have been mounting for quite a few years now. All the 1366 uh, Xeons mounted this way, or something very similar anyway. Now this area here, there's a threaded pin, and this is where all your heat sinks are going to go into um, from now on, or at least with this. Uh, but this is all built into the, the hold down plate. Um, so uh, with the standard Intel design anyway, you've got to use these threaded points. Asus, for example, have a slightly different way of mounting theirs, but nevertheless, you need these threaded points used. Now, if I turn the board over quick, there is a much larger backplate. Now, the idea is, is with the larger backplate and the uh, screw down points like this, there's a much better, there's more rigidity. It keeps the board nice and straight because the CPU is actually significantly larger than it was before. And it's now got a double retaining mechanism as well. I will say that these mounting points are the same distance apart as a 1366 but because of the threaded points around the socket 1366 uh, native bolt through coolers won't fit some manufacturers are going to bring you out different um, mounts that can go into this like Noctua have already got uh, different threaded points that go into this using the standard back plate um, but it is worth looking at. So although the sizes are the same, with the boards that come with this mounting mechanism, you won't be able to use your old coolers unless you get a new mount. So that's something very, you really need to remember that. But the uh, retaining mechanism, like I said, it's a double retaining mechanism. You release that side, so this is free now. Then this side you push down. You need to give it a little bit of a pull out to get it past... Oh to get it past this point but there you go you give it a little bit of a pull and it comes out trying to do it with one hand is complete fail right there we go should really have got someone to help me with it anyway once you've released those two you can then release the main and retaining plate which then gives you access to the CPU, which we can take out here, put it to the side, and we can show you the actual CPU socket itself. Now this is the first time we've been able to show you the CPU socket because of obviously the Intel NDA and the like. Don't forget you can pause at any moment should you want to. One thing to note as well is not only is it double retaining, but there's um, rather than just two little notches on the CPU, there's two on uh, each of the ends. But I think it's now time to compare the uh, CPU side by side. Right then guys. This is an 1155 CPU, this is a 1366 CPU, and this is a 2011 CPU. Now you can see the sizes do uh, gradually go up, obviously, because of the different socket sizes. Something that is quite interesting, if you turn the 2011 CPU round, it is actually very similar sized to the 1366. Obviously, if you turn it back around that way, it's not. But it's just worth noting that the uh, 2011 is kind of rectangle rather than being square like the other two. So you can see there's quite a difference in uh, sizes there. Obviously, with the um, 1155s, you can get uh, dual cores and quad cores. Uh, the top of the range one goes up to 2600K 
k or the 2700k but either way they're four calls with uh four threads is four x sorry we will start again four calls eight threads so we'll, so you get eight threads all together um this six calls 12 threads maximum but they do do quad calls in this as well the 2011 processor um there are technically for the like the mainstream um six cores and 12 threads as well but there are xeons with eight cores and 16 threads something that i've heard uh from intel as well is that all of these processors that are released at the moment do have eight cores and 16 threads but two of the cores are actually fused off um something to do with overclocking and stuff like that but the ones where all the cores work perfectly it's all to do with speed binning but the ones where all the cores work perfectly they go on to the xeons but with the xeons they're not really designed to overclock all the ones that overclock really really well end up becoming the extreme six core processors it's pretty much what many many cpus are like they actually get binned um, and it's to stop waste basically so if there's something slightly wrong with one of them and it doesn't pass the tests they pretty much turn it off and it becomes a lower cpu that's just the way it works um, but yeah that's a little bit of information for you pretty much all of the 2011 extreme cpus uh, will actually have eight cores inside them you just can only use six how about that one um, but yeah that's the end of the comparison for you the end of a very short video for me as well don't forget to subscribe and comment, subscribe especially, and if you like the video, hit the favourite button.